there is no point uh, you know again uh, giving my introduction but uh, i would love to uh, hear more about the different uh, you know doubts that you guys guys might be having and also the discussion that we'll be having based on that if you have any doubts on the frameworks as well as different uh, cases and in as an overall how life in management consulting is so we'll we can sort that out in our discussion so let's start i guess so um, yeah as you guys know this is a session to discuss the case frameworks and how to approach a case uh, the basic uh, thing to remember in approaching any case is that you need to first clarify uh, with the interviewer and in this case in your real life with the client that what is the exact problem if you if you don't have an idea about what the exact problem uh yeah if you don't have a problem uh, understanding about what's the exact problem then uh, there can be some gap in your knowledge and you may probably miss out key understandings of the problem and you can deviate from the solving part right so understanding a case and uh, in, in 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 this case in particularly interviews asking all the clarifying questions is important because the solution may lie with a very important uh, information which you may miss out if you don't ask the questions properly and <clears throat> the next is obviously that uh, to reach a solution or otherwise to structure the problem properly you need knowledge about different industries and functionalities of how companies work in real life so that insights needs to be very clear and that you can achieve via Uh, you know reading different reports industry reports and i think all the colleges and uh, these days making uh, you know industry booklets so you can go through that and uh, you know gather these knowledge about different industries and the next steps would be to basically analyze the problem and communicate your not only the assumptions but your understanding properly to the interviewer so that there is no gap in the communication between you and what your thought process is and what the interviewer is thinking there can be way uh, you know cases where you you may be approaching a problem in your own way but the interviewer may think that okay another approach can be you know useful to reach the solution so it's always better to communicate everything that you are thinking of and how you are going to approach the problem in let's say next 2 to 3 minutes try to clearly mention it to the interviewer okay for example let's say if you think if you are thinking that a customer journey would be suitable for solving the problem in the next steps state that first if the interviewer thinks that okay this is not a correct step he or she will be clearly mentioning that out and then you can maybe try to go with the another approach so it's always better to communicate it clearly and other than that various skill sets like data analysis and you know problems the basics of problem solving and first principle would be required in a case interview so we'll talk about that so maybe maybe we can move to the next slide and uh, please guys like if you have any doubts uh, do mention it in the chat we'll try to uh, you know solve them between or otherwise later right um yeah and and this terminology right me see you guys probably have heard it a lot while you know uh, preparing for consulting interview so what is that it's basically you know it's trying to trying to form a proper structure where you do not miss out any important question or let's say any important uh, part of the problem so it's the full form is obviously mutually exclusive and collect, collectively exhaustive but to do that in each step is tricky to solve the problem because if you may if you don't do that a there can be a, some steps which you are missing or some points which you are missing which can be crucial to solve the problem and second is there can be overlaps between your buckets while you are structuring the problem and that can create a impression on the interviewer that okay this guy is actually asking me repeated questions so to avoid that making Or, or let's say creating a structure which is which is close to truly messy is very important and obviously in each structure or in each bucket you have to give some supporting data or argument to the 
client or let's say in this case the interviewer uh, so that you convey your message properly for example uh, let's say uh, if you were let's say if it's a case where the solution is related to movies and you are trying to gauge uh, what kind of movies let's say are shown in a movie theater right so now if you try to gauge what kind of movies movies are shown so how will you make it a messy approach right so you have to first jot down all the features of a movie let's say a genre the language the type of movie the timings of the movie the length of the movie everything that you can think of right that would help you to actually structure the problem better and uh, you know then discuss it further with the interviewer also uh, if you if you have a clearly have something some figure in your mind for example some 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 cost or some footfall of customers some number associated with the problem that you are actually trying to solve it's always better to break it down in equations which will also help you to get a messy structure so i think we can move to the next slide yeah so as you guys know that there are basic type of cases which are generally asked in interviews and the the most basic being the profitability case where often the problem is that uh, some client is facing some issue with their profit or ebitda or or maybe their sales are not going that much um another type of case can be market entry where uh, the client is trying to enter a new market and whether that entry is feasible or not as a consultant you need to figure that out and some other type of cases are growth cases where uh, the interviewer often ask whether a particular uh, company uh, to to achieve some growth in some market what kind of ideas or you know what kind of steps that company can uh, take so that is basically a ideation case and uh, probably the other one can be a uh, pricing case but uh, as far as i know pricing cases are very you know rare cases that are asked in interviews interviews specifically in bcg uh, and the last one and which is the most important and the most difficult is the abstract case where there are no frameworks that you can use so basically entirely first principle thinking and messy structuring helps you to solve those kind of abstract cases an easy example can be let's say uh government of india is facing a uh, increase in uh, deaths by road accidents so as a consultant you have to figure out that uh, what can be the cause behind so this is a abstract case where the problem is not actually coming into any of these well known structures and uh, and these are very genuine problems which you know firms like bcg solves for clients government clients in particular so this is where your first principle thinking and how you break down the problem in each stage helps you to solve and corner case the particular solution okay uh, now to basically uh, talk about profitability frame framework uh, as it is shown here that uh, either like profit is basically again revenue minus cost so again this is kind of a messy approach on the revenue side there is no overlap with the cost and revenue again uh, can be broken down yeah please because can you yeah can you uh, can you write down the question if it's okay um so so again revenue is basically again price in multiplied by units sold and as i was saying uh, when when you are doing messy structuring it's basically breaking down into equations and that's what exactly is done in profitability as well the structure can be also you know broken down into level 3 level 4 and level 5 where further breakups can be done but we'll discuss that with the example later uh, in our session so can we move to the next slide yeah um the next one that which is most popular is the market entry case uh where uh, basically it is asks that a client needs to enter a market let's say a uh, shoe manufacturer wants to enter uh, indian shoe manufacturer to enter the neighboring country 
and uh, as a consultant you need to figure out that whether the market is be feasible or not and if so then how the client should enter the market. Um, so these kind of cases generally requires the knowledge of the industry and the market. And we as a consultant do two things here. Uh, first, obviously, after asking all the clarifying questions regarding the client, regarding the market, we try to do a industry wide analysis of, let's say, how many competitors are present, what are the barriers to enter. Let's say if it's a very capital intensive industry, like very high amount of investments are required to, let's say, um, enter the market or let's say uh, open up a factory and etc. That kind of analysis we do that is called industry analysis. And also, let's say if the client wants to enter in this example, the neighboring countries of India, right? So how how attractive the markets are, whether there are, if there are enough population or there are enough relevant population in terms of the exact customer segment that the client wants to target. Are those present or not? Uh, do that kind of analysis is required or, or let's say if, if the government is helpful in the entry to the country. So these kind of analysis are done to finalize whether the entry strategy is feasible or not. And if so, then what kind of strategy? Should they acquire a particular player which is already present in the market? Or do they do it from scratch which is for field investment? or whether they can do a particular, you know, go, go for a joint venture with an existing big player in the market, that's all. So these kind of analysis, yeah. So yeah, so that's the overall uh, approach for market entry. And often it happens that as, uh, you know, the team was also already mentioning guesstimates, which is done in the previous sessions, I guess. Uh, it often happens that Hello. Yeah, it often happens that as the team was discussing earlier that there are guesstimates which are also very important. Uh, part of market entry case, uh, you may have to solve a guesstimate to actually uh, understand the market potential that the client is trying to enter. So please, uh, you know, focus on guesstimates as well, uh, which can be a very important part while solving your cases. Um, I think we can move to the next slides quickly. Yeah, uh, as I was telling that pricing is also one of the cases which are asked, but that is very rare where you need to help the client uh, or let's say in this case, the interviewer uh, to actually set up a price for a particular commodity or a uh, product, right? It can be anything. It can be a service based uh, pricing. I mean, I mean, pricing for a particular service that the client is having, or it can be a product as well. For example, I I can give you an example of a pricing case where let's say a cab vendor like Uber or Ola is trying to enter let's say a different market like Germany or something. So you have to help the client basically in this case Uber or Ola to set up how would they price their uh, you know cabs. So that kind of discussion. So again you have to decide like whether uh, what kind of pricing frameworks would you use? So is it cost based where you will first, uh, you know, guesstimate the what are the cost per per, you know, uh, service cost would be for Uber, let's say, and on that, what kind of margin that they want, then you will finalize the price. Also, if it is competitive, then you will ask, okay, whether there are any existing players in the market. If it is, then okay, I mean, how big that player is? Is it is it more or less comparable to Uber? If it is, then Uber would be probably for initially they will, uh, you know, subsidize the price a bit to get it a more competitive and then probably they can increase. Or if it is value based, then you have to, uh, you know, gauge what would be the customer's willingness to pay, right? That you have to gauge. Okay. Okay. Let's say you have to then follow a top down approach. What kind of uh, opportunity cost, right? Like, let's say if it's a five kilometer uh, journey it, currently with the other options like let's say public transport or you know ca uh, other cabs or let's say other uh, you know public transport like train and etc how much are they paying 
and what kind of value that uber is uh, you know providing so based on that you can arrive at a value based price so these kind of uh, analysis are done in pricing strategy um can we move to the next one next slide please yeah the other one is the growth strategy cases which are uh, very important from consulting perspective because these are very common cases that you know these management consulting firms get here you basically help the client to increase their sales or let's say increase expand their market into some other markets right uh, you follow a very basic structure here that is whether uh they are uh, looking to enter into a new market with new product or existing market with existing product or the combination of these like existing market new product and new product and existing market right so these combinations you explore but these are basically ideation cases you keep on conversing with the interviewer in this case to figure out what kind of strategy the you know client needs to follow and based on that you put your ideas you put your ideas in front of the uh, client or in this case the interviewer right so that is the i think overall four major case frameworks apart from that there are abstracts that i was already mentioning before where there are no particular case frameworks that you can use only your um, breaking down of the problem in each stage using your mc and first principle that would help you to solve the cases but first if you are starting uh, your case um, you know preparation now case interview preparations please start with profitability frameworks and then go ahead with market entry and how exactly the team has showcased then probably pricing growth and then abstract cases that would be the best way to go ahead okay um so before we go ahead with solving the case any one of you actually try to like solve it like would want to volunteer i mean it would be a great uh, you know opportunity to actually see how uh, partners uh, do the interview cases and it would be more or less similar it can actually give you a good exposure hello uh, i can volunteer to do the case am i audible yeah yeah hi good evening so is it shekhar or uh, shikshan shekhar you can call me shekhar okay great shekhar yeah great so thanks for volunteering and uh, so shall we start then yeah sure Are you ready with the okay great fine so what i'll do is uh, i'll dictate the case and will interact with you and based okay. on that whatever your um, you know input sir i'll put down the key points on the miro board is that fine oh let me just quickly see whether it's working right okay fine so uh shekhar are you ready yeah okay so generally what happens in uh, at first uh, the interviewer will give you a problem statement uh, and uh, based on that you have to first reiterate the statement uh, to clarify whether you are getting the problem correctly or not and then you can start ahead with the clarifying questions first to set up the scope and then go ahead with the uh, framework right so we'll try to follow that same approach as well okay so uh, shekhar uh, so basically your client is a beverage manufacturer you can say uh, different kind of beverages like non alcoholic alcoholic everything they have in their portfolio uh, they are based out of uk and they are trying to expand into different neighboring countries in europe right but they uh, had some setback while they were trying to expand to germany uh, while they entered the market around 7 uh, to 8 months ago they are facing a reduction in their profit which has been constantly on the decline for the past 6 months now uh, what is happening is your the ceo of the company is concerned and they have hired your agency 
to help them to solve the problem. And as a consultant, you have been allotted into the case. Now you need to figure out uh, what exactly is the issue and uh, help them probably to reach a solution for this. Okay, so first I would like to know what is the magnitude of the decline that the client is facing? And are they facing the decline only in specifically in Germany or after expanding in Germany, they are facing it across other countries as well? Right, so they are having a 40% decline and uh, and no, the other countries in other countries, they are not facing any decline. Okay, so 40% decline only in Germany. So I would like to know if they have completely moved into Germany. So are they offering all their portfolio or are they only offering a select kind of beverages in Germany as of now? Uh, currently, they are uh, trying to go ahead with uh, all kind of port beverages as such, but they are focusing mostly in alcoholic beverages. Alcoholic, okay. Uh, then do we have any data? Uh, if this is from the uh, cost side or the revenue side, I'll, I will try to list out some of the cost and revenue features after that, if we have any data on that. Okay, um, so yeah, I mean, you can say that uh, they are facing basically a sales decline. There is no issue on the cost side. Okay, so decline is in from the sales side. Yes. So the decline in revenue could be attributed to uh, let's see. the lack in demand. So in the revenue, we can say the, the lack in de revenue can come from the lack in demand or from a problem in the supply side. Okay. So we have any data if the problem is from the demand side or the supply side. Yeah, so there is no issue with the supply side. We can explore the demand side. Okay, so for the demand side, uh, we can We can actually ask whether that kind of particular beverage is favored in Germany or not. I mean, that particular kind of alcoholic beverage. Go ahead. The fall in demand. Uh, I would like to attribute the fall in demand to one of these five factors. There could be a fall in uh, need, awareness, affordability, accessibility, or the experience of the product. So in the need, there comes that do they have the need decreased for the certain type of beverage. But as this is not an industry wide problem, I would assume this is not the case. Uh, in awareness, we can check up the promotion and the marketing of a product. This could uh, take in, entail both the positive promotion as well as any negative publicity that we have received. In affordability, we can benchmark our price with our competitors and see if they are offering any uh, payment scheme or offers, which is better than ours. Or uh, in accessibility, I would like to see the number of stores that we have and benchmark it with our competitors and how are they dispersed around the country. And in experience, it would be the entire experience from the customer journey from buying our product to its taste and quality and, and the post sales impact, basically. So, do we have any idea? If... Great. Uh, so, let's start one by one. We have uh, in, in need, as such, so uh, the kind of need that we have for alcoholic beverages and the entire portfolio that is constant. There is no issue on that. Uh, on the awareness part, you are basically mentioning the kind of marketing promotions that they are having, right? So, uh, yeah, yes. marketing will be coming here. 
no so the promotion has been done well and it has been with all the regulating standards and has been used uh, a standard promo promotion you know uh, strategy so it's not an issue on the affordability part also the prices are more or less competitive with the kind of uh, beverages that are already present in the market they have actually priced it a bit low on the lower side as well uh, to actually you know capture the market better uh, on the accessibility part no it's it's uh, the supply chain is well established and it's been present in all the stores uh, as you were correctly pointing out since uh, the other drinks are not or the other beverage companies are not facing any issue so there should not be any issue with accessing accessing these stores and the experience part probably we can explore okay for experience part i would like to map out the entire customer journey so the customer journey would be the pre purchase uh, the during purchase and the post purchase i would like to uh, divide it in three parts so pre purchase is when they get to know about the product the when like i mentioned the promotion and the uh, marketing of the product mm -hmm. and the other reviews that you can find online or from other people uh, during okay. purchase i would like to mention like uh, again accessibility comes in our store if uh, our products are less accessible than other products in our store uh, how is the quality of a product is it benchmarking with the competitors is there any problem with the packaging of our products uh, uh, do the customers feel that the packaging is inferior compared to the competitors and uh, the life cycle of the product and the uh, like if our product has less life cycle as in the competitors and the defect rate in our product these are the things you can see during purchase what is, what is the last one the defect rate okay like fine. the amount of uh, defaulted products that we got it got it not an issue yeah okay fine and in experience, we can also add uh, the customer service and feedback that we get from the customers in post purchase. Uh, okay. Uh, in purchase, we could also add any offers and uh, temporary schemes that are offered by our competitors, maybe at this time, and we have not incorporated in, into our sales. Okay. Uh, in post purchase, we can add any buying advantage that our customers like uh, our competitors might be giving. Like if they buy the product, we could get a uh, an additional benefit somewhere else. Like some products offer like uh, discounts on other products if you buy them, something like that. Got it. Got so, it. So these are the things that we can look into, I guess. Okay um let's start with the the pre-purchase part so basically in pre-purchase you are saying that the customer hasn't purchased yet right but there is some yes. issue with the previous okay fine let's explore this so in pre-purchase the what matters is the review that the customer is getting from other people the review that is presented okay. online all the publicity okay. negative and positive for the product and okay. the if is the customer aware about the product uh, are they effectively placed in the stores okay it would be, it could be possible that the stores are favoring other companies over our product and placing them got better it. got for it. visibility so got these it. are the things that we can Okay, based on how you have defined the buckets, there is no issue with the placements. These products are clearly visible in the um, uh, stores. Uh, reviews are obviously a problem. That is why the you know uh, there is a decline in the sales. People are talking about our product, and there are some issue with the reviews for sure. But not like online reviews as such as you were mentioning. There is no issue with the publicity yes. as well. So and so and this is basically a related thing, review and publicity. So yes, yeah. So, so as can you can a problem with the review. Uh, the customers are not uh, talking positively about a product. 
that right. could mean they have a problem with the experience they have with the product uh, mainly after purchase because people give review after using something so we can check the purchase part in detail no that is that is not the problem purchase is not an issue uh, you can say people are actually giving review bad reviews without purchasing okay yeah if if someone is purchasing then they we have seen that there are repeat purchases that is not an issue uh, but we are not able to gain customers We are not able to gain customers. Uh, so we are not able to gain customers, and people who have not even purchased the product are giving bad reviews. It could be possibly due to some sort of rumor that is being. Circulated about our product. Okay. Or, what else? Or or uh, do we know if uh, the people are uh, uh, only giving bad reviews about our brand, or is it happening with some other brands as well? uh it's not exactly Except. bad yeah it's not exactly bad review i would say but there is some issue with the perception of the product okay and it's only with our product okay so i think it ties in with perception ties in with some kind of rumor that is going on about a product in which it is shading our product in a negative light yep so and it is about the alcoholic drink so Correct. does it have to do anything with the rules and regulation with which we sell our product and does it have something different like uh, like in germany mm -hmm. The legal huh. age for drinking in Germany does it have to something to do with that? Is it different from the other countries that we have been in? And like, it could be possible that the legal age for drinking in Germany was is possibly less than of the other countries that we were working with before. We were working in before, and as we have moved into Germany, we are still only marketing or selling it to the previous age bar. Okay. Understood. It's a valid point, but uh, this is not the case in this case. Okay. Uh, does it uh, have something to do with the historical significance in the cultural significance of the country? Like our brand uh, has some symbolism that could maybe tie in with some historical thing that is a taboo. Taboo. Like okay. For Germany, uh, it could be something related to. World. understood understood so you are saying that uh, some perception is coming from the history of our brand or let's say something like that right uh, like how our symbolism and our brand ties in with the history and the culture of germany understood understood uh, this is not the case as well think a bit more like uh, let's say uh, perception builds so you are currently thinking about the reasons right but uh, let's say yeah. how how perceptions can build like there can be internal reasons and external reasons right now we are only talking about let's say the external reasons as such what yeah. can be the internal factors as well let's explore that so something our client has done wrong yeah Is it is it basically some activity from the uh, some high ranking official in our company, the client company, no. maybe something no, like that, no. controversial no. or something? No, 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 no.
have they made any inherent change with the product recently in the past six seven years when they introduced it in Germany? Inherent change in what sense? Can you please explain? Uh, uh, like the product that they marketed in other countries, they made some change in that product while before launching it in Germany. It could be from the raw the ingredients, uh, some short, sort of uh, composition or packaging or anything. Okay, composition you mentioned, ingredients you mentioned, right? Uh, to make it more relevant packaging. for Germany and packaging, right? Yeah, let's explore packaging. So we can say that we have changed packaging. So do we know have we changed the packaging for Germany or we are using the same packaging that we were that we use in other countries as well? So we are uh, using more or less the standard package that we use across countries. Okay, but that standard pack package is not well received in Germany. Okay, so can be can be that yeah that, that is the case actually why do you think that is so the packaging the packaging would uh, entail the following basically the material out of which the packaging is made the size of the packaging okay and the design of the packaging basically the graphic and everything of that so these are the things okay. three things that Okay, let's that explore design. The reason for the design. So the design okay. of the packaging was a problem. Uh, design. Design. Is it because of some uh, like uh, the graphics of the design or because of the uh, this, you know? How oh, the bottle shape or anything is the dimensions. Um, the dimensions, right? So uh, there is no issue with the dimensions as such. Maybe you can explore graphics. I mean, what are you exactly meaning by graphics? Graphics means like the brand logo or anything else that we are using on a uh, packaging, like. Any kind of uh, logo vector images. Okay. You are close, but uh, what else is coming under graphics? Uh, is it because of the language uh, that is written on a packaging? What else? So you mentioned images, language, logo, anything else that you can think of? Related to image. Uh, the uh, color, color scheme. Correct, correct. So there is some issue with the color scheme. So can you think of what can be the reason? Uh, the color scheme. Could be a reason, uh, could be something that could again like tie into some cultural historical significance, like uh, something that is symbolic to Nazi, maybe, or <laughs> okay, or the color. Okay, <clears throat> it's symbolic, definitely, but. Um... I'll tell you, let's, I mean, it's a very good attempt shaker. I'll uh, give you the solution and we'll close the case. So what is happening, um, our client, their product is basically divided into two broad categories. One is the light beers and the another one is the strong beers, right? And yes. um, in general, uh, their packaging is such that the light beers are labeled in red the strong beers are labeled in light blue. That is the standard packaging norm that they follow in across the countries. 
but in germany light blue is the color which is which signifies all the light beers okay and navy blue is for the strong beers so okay. as i was mentioning earlier we are not having issue with customers which are already present like people who are liking the light beers they are okay they are they are still our customers but the strong beers people who like they are going ahead they are not finding the strong beer so basically when you go to a bar right you see that there are a lot of bottles are present you just say that okay give me that bottle right so these strong beers people are not able to gather that perception from the packages and that is why they are not trying out our beers that is the problem as i have mentioned earlier that not able to gain the customers that is the issue uh okay uh, sir uh, i have a doubt uh, basically yeah. i had this perception that uh, if we have to look into the quality and the packaging of our product uh, we see it in the during purchase part that's why right. i also mentioned it in the during purchase part earlier so that's yeah, why understood. i understood yeah uh, understood so there were some there was some overlap in the structuring right because it, it's actually happening pre purchase yeah yeah if you see right so maybe we could have uh, you know defined it better i'll i'll talk about that probably now but it was a good attempt i mean i liked how you structured it along the way and uh, when uh, you were lost in between i guess for some time when i was telling that okay there can be issue with internal and external both um where yeah. where you picked it up and you now then started analyzing the product which was also which is also a very important thing in solving cases to pick up the hints that the uh, interviewer is actually giving you so that was good um first of all do anyone else have any questions on the solving or in the case to uh there are a lot of chats i'll just quickly go through the chats uh so krishna to the customer buyer yeah that is that is i think was also covered aishman i think in one of the questions that whether there is any customer bias or not but it's a, it's a valid point i mean for alcoholic beverages in particular there can be customer bias a strong customer bias can hinder in uh, you know gathering new customers that's it customer believes again to uh, yeah again bad publicity was also covered vikas so that is there that can be a problem always in new markets that is promotion is also covered great i think i think yeah more or less we have covered all the points that was mentioned in the chat um after solving they can ask you to actually give solutions as well or recommend some solutions although i mean generally 20 to 30 minutes are given to solve the case and they may not ask you uh, but if if like this is a generic um, advice to you guys if 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 the interview is asking actually for solutions as well please divide that into the solutions also into some bucket a very generic one can be a long term and short term approach what can be done in short term what can be done in long term also you can give some other bucketing as well in this case let's say what can be done in the campaigns or what can be done what product changes can be done etc right so that that also you can uh, try with different buckets and you can give out your solution uh, now few pointers i think shekhar the solve was very good uh, the only thing that i felt was that you could have asked a bit more clarifying questions initially 
um like for example you you got to know that it's an alcoholic beverage but you were i think not clear about exactly what what beverages are they selling right at the end i told yeah. you that there are good and strong beers strong but you could have easily yeah you could have easily asked that okay what are the beverages that they are focusing on yeah then i could have told you that okay mainly there are light and strong beers and then you could have asked me okay the decline is it along in any of these in particular so you were always with with clarifying questions you were trying to narrow down the problem okay. um if you, if you could have asked me that then i would have told you that okay the main problem is with the strong beers where the declining problem right so, so like that and also you could have i think you later picked it up in some point but you could have also asked me about what are the different customer uh, let's say profiles that we are targeting right are they i mean you later on picked it up that okay there can be some age category but you could have asked it at the beginning that uh, are we targeting teenagers with the beers are we targeting more mature people so then also i could have told you that okay uh, light beers are mostly for all all kind of customer irrespective of the gender and the age but strong beers are mainly you know people who are like hard working and who are like mature probably uh, of 21 plus age of 21 plus and who have a strong you know uh, bias to the brands as well right so these uh, points would have helped you to probably narrow down the uh, problem a bit more uh it was correct to ask that whether this is a supply side or a demand side lot of people miss that so it was good that you asked it and you immediately bucketed it into the correct bucketing right the five uh, points under demand is correct and uh, then uh, on the customer journey one one thing is that you you done it actually well like you defined the pre purchase purchase and post purchase but do remember that some of these buckets right packaging quality and accessibility can be present in pre purchase as well so do not miss that out when you are doing this right when you are presenting the entire bucket to me obviously i'll start from the n plus 1th layer and we'll see you right i won't say ki okay chalo in part because there is no issue with the purchase part the issue is coming under pre purchase Yes. So even if you have mentioned that there can be some issue with the packaging, I won't. At that point, I can't mention that okay, there is some issue with the packaging because the bucketing is not coming under pre purchase, right? So there probably a bit better bucketing would help you. And um, yeah, after that, I think uh, more or less it was good. I liked how you were always conversing. and you were providing me the directions that you were thinking that is why i i kind of caught up that okay probably here you are just throwing some ideas about what kind of perceptions you know what are what are the reasons behind perceptions right yeah. here one point it is always better if if i would not have given you direction here that there can be internal and external points right yeah it's always better when you are like feeling that okay i am stuck or i am lost it's always better to tell or communicate that to the interviewer okay that i think that i am not able to follow the reasons here let me take a step back and figure out what can be the bucket please communicate that don't stop communicating that would like create a negative impression on the interviewer okay let's say this guy is stuck never let let that feel to the interviewer right Uh, um other than that once you came to the product the rest of the solvers great like you bucketed it perfectly and uh, you reached the solution so yeah that was a good solve actually shaker to do some that um any any doubt guys on this solve i think maybe you can speak up or an old order
great if there is any uh, if there is no question on the case solve as such you can like probably we can take 5 to 6 more minutes right can we extend advait uh, so yes sir i mean it's uh, if you are convenient with it yeah we can sure. yeah i mean if the guys want to ask any questions regarding consulting in general then we can do it otherwise we can close the session on time as well Oh, so guys, I do have, have yeah, I do have a, I do have prepared a like kind of solve for this case. I'll share it with you. You can share it to the attendees later. Okay. Great, sir. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be sharing this uh, to all the attendees. Yeah, sure. Got it. so guys uh, if you have any questions regarding consulting in general please feel uh, free to uh, ask us also we have a question on chat so, so yeah how yeah, can got it. a uh, krishna i think um, for internships as such uh, there are opportunities present and uh, but it's less the internships are more or less uh, given to mba schools uh, but but you know firms do come to btech uh, colleges for uh, hiring as such full time hiring uh, that 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 you can always explore or otherwise uh, you can always go to the company site the internship offerings are always posted there then you can probably have a look at it but as per my experience i have mostly seen that uh, btech students are uh, given opportunities for full time hirings the internships are mostly given to uh, b schools okay uh slide slide making is just a part of you know case presentation and also consulting but you know in firms like uh, bcg and you know mckinsey and other big firms um you don't have to worry that much about creating let's say attractive slides as such it's more the more focus is on problem solving and your analysis how you analyze the data and the client inputs that you are getting right so case presentation is a secondary skill that is required to be very frank in these front end consulting firms um and anyway i mean presentation skills are not a not a very you know hard skill to get and you can easily master them while you are on the case as well so it's it's not difficult major focus should be on problem solving and data analysis and also how to interact with clients managing clients right so vikas uh, i think i have already mentioned the skills in the uh, previous question the answer to the previous question but yeah i mean these are major skills here i mean uh, problem solving how you structure the problem obviously how you manage the clients and the other stakeholders right uh, the other stakeholders being the team members your managers your uh, the other associated teams like knowledge team and you know um experts etc etc the various stakeholders that you are interacting with how you manage them how you keep track of each information and how you consolidate all those to your analysis to ultimately find out a find out a solution right that is the 
major skill that one requires in consulting to be very frank not these presentation skills or as such but if you are asking what what kind of tools that we work in general so those will be mostly you know excel uh, mostly office excel word and uh, you know uh, powerpoint other than that uh, a bit of power bi is are also used or alteryx and tableau but those are very like advanced dashboard making and you know um, data analysis tools but majorly excel powerpoint and off you know word that is required And also a bit of Python um, skill helps you in the long term. In terms of automating things and you know data analysis. Yes, BCG does offer data analyst roles. Lot of data analysts work with us, and you can explore them. The major, of you know. Responsibility of data analysts are to help the case teams as well as the internal report making teams that BCG has um, with the data and also also to like help them reach the insights. So yeah, Peter, I mean, BCG not only BCG other consulting firms also offer data analyst roles and they are very important roles in the firm. Those consulting firms open roles for master students particularly in tech. Yeah, uh, so Mohit, uh, I mean, consulting for industries driven by knowledge, right? And uh, I mean, they they generally pitch it to pitch to the clients by showing what kind of knowledge base that they have. So yeah, I mean, MTech that is not an issue. Consulting firms do offer roles, but I am not sure whether they are opening roles in the you know particularly the ca in campuses right now. But you can always explore it via the other networks. Like in, you can always explore it off campus as well. So yeah, there is no bar as such, Mohit, that whether MTech students can join or not. But probably I think this time what I have heard that they are opening it only for BTech students in campuses. Pritam, these are more or less similar roles, uh, basically. But but I mean, as far as I know, data analysts would be more coldly involved in you know, let's say sourcing data from different resources or probably making reports and analyzing them. Uh, they are mostly on the uh, helping front uh, for the case teams. But the business analysts they generally tackle uh, the reporting and auditing part as well as they actively involved in case uh, solving. So very, very minor difference here. I mean, uh, very minor difference. Yes, uh, Fahad, so there are a lot of consulting case books. I think uh, one had one has been or, or will be going to released by uh, consulting club IIT Guwahati as well. Uh, the top colleges always the consulting clubs at least they prepare case books and they share it with the uh, pub share it in public. So they are all the case repositories you can go through. And uh, this is in general as well, not only I mean, you guys should not just go through these case books or at least I'd read these case books. It's always better to read one or two case to get an idea how an interview is driven and then please prepare among your peers. That is the most important part. If you don't solve it on your own or if you don't, sh let's say at least shadow people solving it, uh, there is very little learning in just, you know, reading those case books and uh, increasing your experience on that. So that won't help. Please solve it with your peers. <laughs> 